Hey everyone, thanks for coming today. My name is Levi Harris. Uh, today we are going to talk about fearsome critters from the lumberjack lore. <laughs> Okay, so if you haven't heard of them, the Fearsome Critters is a group of, of creatures from jump lumberjack folklore. Um, <laughs> so this is, this is when the lumberjacks were going out into America, into the kind of wild and unknown places, and, and they would spread kind of legends of, of these just kind of crazy animals and creatures that they said they would assure you are out there. Now what I love about these stories is that usually it would be the new man that comes onto the job that doesn't know the territory. And that, uh, as, as one writer put it, someone would be talking about one of these creatures and then an old, an old, another old man would completely agree with everything that he was saying. Therefore, of course, these animals and these creatures were real. So I just want to read, um, about some of these different creatures, the ones that I that I love the most, and about kind of what they were. So something called the agro pelter, right, was this creature that you you never really saw. Some people said it might uh, look like an ape or or a monkey, but it would throw uh, pieces of wood at you when you weren't looking. It would hide in the trees, and every time you got hit with a piece of wood, it was the agro pelter. Um, the ball tailed cat was something very much like a, a puma or a uh, a mountain lion, but it had a big ball on the end of its tail that it would uh, kill its prey with. And it, it was the only difference. And if you asked a lumberjack, it was absolutely real. The axe handle hound was a, uh, a canid, a, a dog that only ate axe handles. And it was because it was long and skinny, it couldn't eat anything else. So if your axe handle went missing as a lumberjack, the axe handle hound totally ate it. One of my favorite animals is the Dungavan Hooter. And the Dungavan Hooter was like a crocodile creature, except for the, it had an enormous tail and so it would go up to you, and the way that the Dungavan Hooter would eat you is that it would pound you into gas, and it would inhale you into its nostrils. It didn't have a mouth. It would just breathe you in. So if you ran into a Dungavan Hooter, nobody would ever see you again. The cactus cat was a normal cat, but it had the spines of a cactus instead of hair. And it would drink a, uh, a certain, the water of cactus, become intoxicated, and wail, and make these sounds. So if you heard those sounds in the desert, it was a cactus cat. Um... The Glowacus was a mix between a panther, a lion, and a bear. So, pretty fierce creature. The Goombaroo was like a bear with no fur, and its skin was impenetrable. You could, not, you could not stab it, you could not shoot it, you could not kill it in any way except for with fire. And if you did, it would explode like a bomb. So you had to be very careful if you ever went to fight one. Uh, the goofus bird is a bird that flew backwards and built its nest upside down. And besides that, it was just a normal bird. The hide behind is one of my favorite of the fearsome critters because um, it would follow you and it would always be behind you and you could feel it looking at you, but as soon as you turned around, you couldn't see it. It would hide behind a tree. And it was so fast that no one has ever seen what a hide behind actually looks like. And it would keep doing this and get closer and closer until finally... You never came back to camp. The hodag is a creature that uh, it has it has lots of spikes and horns and it has this maniacal grin. It looks kind of like a, a boar or a bear or something. Um, and there's actually a town that I did not write down, so I'll put the name of it right here, um, that the hide behind is kind of their, uh, their um, mascot. So... The jackalope is a legend that we've all probably heard of. Uh, it's a jackrabbit and an antelope together, so it's a rabbit with horns. Um, what's interesting is there's been lots of what's called rogue taxidermy to make jackalopes, so you could go out and buy one if you wanted. The snallygaster is one of my favorite of these monsters because it was an actual full-on dragon that some people actually seemed to believe in. It was said to inhabit the hills of the Frederick counties of Maryland. And what's interesting is that Theodore Roosevelt himself almost went to hunt the Snallygaster. He almost put off a safari in Africa to go hunt it. So there was actual belief that there was a dragon flying around these states. One of the most different and fascinating of the fearsome critters is the Slide Rock Bolter. Uh, it's essentially a giant whale that has a forked tail that it hooks over a mountain and just waits. And it waits until a tourist is right at the bottom, and I don't know why it always has to be a tourist, but it always is in the story. And as soon as the slide rock bolter senses, it lets go, and it's so heavy, it careens down the mountain, gulps up the tourist, 
and then it's uh, taken up the next mountain hill because it's so heavy and it has created such momentum. And then it attaches onto the next mountain and waits for the next tourist. The splinter cat was uh, an animal in the Pacific Northwest that was extremely fast and had a hard head and it would run and just demolish trees. It would hit trees and it would explode into splinters. So if you walked along and you saw a tree that was broken apart, there was probably a splinter cat. The squonk is one of my favorite creatures. Very melancholy, very sad. It's actually the ugliest creature on the planet. And it's so ugly that if you ever lay eyes on a squonk, it will cry and cry and its tears will dissolve it into nothing because it's so sad about how ugly it is. The tea kettler is a small vermin like a mouse or something. Nobody knows what it looks like, but all we know about it is that it makes a really high pitched sound like a tea kettle. So if you hear one of those out there, it's a tea kettler. The wampus cat is a large kind of ghostly panther. What's interesting is the wampus is one of the fearsome critters, there's not many of them, that comes from Native American folklore. Many of these critters started just with the lumberjacks, but the wampus cat is a legend from, from the Native American tribes that have inhabited the, the United States. Some say that if you see a wampus cat, you or a loved one will, will soon die. The fur-bearing trout is a, just a type of fish that grows fur. Um, you can catch it in wintertime and it has adapted to the cold climate and it has silky white or, or brown or, or black fur and other than that it looks exactly like a normal trout. The hoop snake is a snake that apparently was able to reach, bite on its tail and then roll in a, in a hoop like a bicycle tire uh, anywhere it wanted to go. So the hoop snake was extremely fast, faster than other types of snakes. If it started chasing you it was probably going to catch you. The joint snake was also interesting because it was a snake that apparently you could break up into pieces and it would come back together. So those are all the fearsome critters I want to talk about today. I, I find it fascinating that there's this just little bit of, of folklore that I had never heard about and that I hope uh, maybe is, is new to some of you. Um, I like that it's just another little piece of the human story that I had never heard before. And, and I just want to thank you guys for coming today and I'll see you again in another world. Thank you.